Hey guys, what's going on? So about two years ago, I posted a commentary video on the film Chick Fight that I saw on Amazon Prime. And oh my goodness, that film is awful. I have a ranking as of right now. I have two of the worst films I've ever seen. The first one is Jolt with Kate Beckinsale. The next one is this one. So I went back and watched the video, got rid of the intro and the outro because boy, there was a lot of word salad going on. I was saying a bunch of stuff and the commentary itself was actually enjoyable to watch. I was like, let me just repurpose this because I feel like people need to watch this. Sit back, relax. Let me know what you think about this film in the comments below if you have seen it. But without further ado, let's hop into this commentary. <laughs> So Chick Fight, I'm working off of my iPad that is on a stand because I really got to get this right because this film is being considered an action comedy. I think it's so exciting to see this kind of comedy genre with like fight, the fight club um, energy with female powerhouses. In discovering this film, I'm not going to lie, they definitely are pushing the female empowerment film. So now the question is, is it empowering though? So this film came out in 2020 and it's a Amazon Prime film. So if you happen to be on Amazon Prime, you will totally see it. By looking at the poster of it, I can see why a lot of people would probably push by it. But the ratings on it on Amazon Prime are actually pretty high. Like a lot of people gave it four out of five stars. That's not saying a lot. It is one of those things that make me want to watch a film more. But watching a film that has really, really low ratings, I kind of want to see. Like, I'm just more intrigued. But going into this film, I already had a funny feeling about it. One, seeing Bella Thorne on the cover, looking the way she does. Nothing against her personally, but I find sometimes when you're watching someone that's been on Disney and they, like, basically grew up in front of your eyes and then you see them going like far left and now they're being portrayed in a totally different light right now you gotta ask certain questions that some people may not want to ask like why why here why now why are we doing this why are you an only fans ma'am you can live your life the way you want but if this film is going to try to convince me of a thing i need it to be believable in watching this film i'm just going to throw this out there this film was trying really hard to be a much more superior film in doing that they missed a lot of key points and just key elements that make a film good. Um, again, this film is definitely about female empowerment, but let's figure out one, if it's empowering, two, if it's even funny, because it's a comedy. Uh, two really fun characters, I got to be silly with each other, and then kick some booty. Yeah, bye, 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 So you guys are- and is the action even worth it? So the film follows Anna, a woman that's just down on her luck. Money f is not flowing through her easily and freely. We open up to her going to the bathroom and hearing someone having the best sex of their life, I guess. <laughs> right above her as she's on the toilet, also brushing her teeth. Okay. Then she hears noise outside and realizes that her car is getting towed. Who would have guessed that would have happened if you weren't paying the monthly payments to keep your car? The funny thing about cars, lady, you actually have to pay for them. She also has a failing business, a really cute, quaint, curt, quirky coffee shop located that looks like somewhere in the city, but for some reason, it's not getting the business that she needs that she needs it to get in order for her to sustain herself. Very odd. Very odd indeed. It's very odd to have a quirky coffee shop located in the city that does not get any business. That sounds more of a marketing issue, but we're going to skip all that. She has a best friend, big black female best friend, which I discussed in my sex life video. Hollywood does this thing when it comes to the female black best friend where they are very much allergic to relationships when it comes to the heterosexual aspect or they are gung-ho lesbian and this woman is gung-ho all about the pussy i'm a six seven and a half tops and i'm up to my vagina and pussy and it's kind of annoying because she's introduced to the film in a very loud obnoxious kind of way <laughs> So as the film is going on, you're listening to the things that she's saying and doing, you got to believe she might be doing something off screen because I don't believe that she's getting the things that she needs from being the way she is right now. So she's telling her friend about the situation and we're introduced to this really, really hot guy. That's right. Undress him with your eyes. 
Peel up that spandex. It is bad because he's actually pretty. Why, why does it make her that doing? character? Who literally is in the film for like 2.5 seconds, but then we never see him again. But her friend talks about how she has a way to help her get out of her little rut that she's in. Regular bungee jumping, except you jump out of an helicopter into an active volcano. What do I think about volcano bungee jumping? Yeah. I think it's literally the worst idea I've ever heard of. You know, just coming up with ideas of things that she can do. Also, while in this really dead coffee shop that's in the middle of the city and it's really quirky and cute and we don't really have any idea why it's not busy, there's a barista, a decent looking girl, and the best friend shares with Anna, I'ma get her. Your, uh, your new barista, Marnie, I'm going to have her. I don't know anything about her. I don't even know if she's straight or not. And she might as well have added by the end of the film. Because when you watch the film, spoiler, it happens, she ends up getting with her. But you're never fully, you don't fully understand how that happened either. So you're watching how she interacts with people, how she interacts with Anna and just with everybody. And when she is talking about her lesbian interactions, it's hard for me to believe that she was able to attract that chick. Like, yeah, the film is getting to that point where where everything's just gonna happen to, just happen to fall into place. But there has to be a little bit of realism. So her business goes up in flames. And I mean that in the most literal sense, because when you have a failing business, you don't, I guess from what this film is saying, you don't stop and think about, maybe we need to work on marketing. Maybe we need to put out ads, you know, on social media, create an Instagram account, because this is, this film was made in 2020 and it's rated R. That's really weird. I didn't even realize it was rated R. <laughs> I'm realizing right now I'm on Google and it said it as rated R. For what though? Marketing, Instagram, ads, social media, those, these are things that help when it comes to a failing business, especially if you're a coffee shop and you're in the city. Um, those are ideas that I would think, I'm not the smartest person, but when it comes to getting yourself out there, that would be the best option. But no, Anna decides with her best friend, let me get her best friend's name, because it's very important to get these names, because at first when I was doing this video, I didn't know anybody's name. Charlene is the best friend. They decide, because Anna does not have money. You know, she can't afford her car. It got towed. It got repoed. She can't afford to keep her business afloat. But somehow, some way, she was able to find money to get alcohol and drugs. Whether her friend brought it or not, it's besides the point, it's the priorities. Anyway, so they're smoking and drinking, trying to think about how to just escape this world this this world that's just so hard on her and she might be at fault for the fire that takes place in the coffee shop hey allegedly she might be at fault who knows and then you cause a whole fire like i don't have insurance Ugh. charlene invites her to this fight club where a lot of women go to fight the worries and the pain of the world and they become better people because of it they just beat each other up and for each person that wins they put a dollar on a wall that's the tradition the winner gets to put a dollar bill on the wall seriously now that one got me too because i'm not gonna lie i'm thinking in my head let's say you're a person that's struggling like financially like anna you just so happen to be good at fighting every time you win you have to put a dollar on the wall how counterproductive is that and hear me out Actually, before i even go any further i went to starbucks and i usually I'm gung-ho, no, Starbucks, no. But because I really wanted to make this video and I didn't want to have an excuse to go too far out, I really wanted to just go to Starbucks, which is really right down the street from me. I had a mango dragon fruit uh, refresher and water because I'm dehydrated as hell. But that mango dragon fruit, though, delicious. Back to the fact that the winners had to put dollars on the wall. Like, as the film was going on, I understand, like, it... It sounded cool, but wouldn't it sound even better and more of an encourager for people that are losing to put the dollar on the wall? I feel like, I don't know, to me, it sounded weird. I feel like if you lost the fight, you should put the dollar on, on the wall, not if you win. You're dealing with the struggles of life and you win this fight, but now you're losing money still. Why would that encourage someone to want to keep winning fights, right? Am I, am I thinking too much about it? <laughs> Let's say a professional fighter, uh, you know, a UFC fighter, a boxer, they, they win their fights and because they win, now they have to pay the house because they won. Why would someone want to win the fight then? It was just really weird when I saw it. At first I was just like, ah, this film is stupid, but then I started to dissect the film a lot and it didn't really make sense. I, I would think they would make more sense for the people that lose the fight to put the dollar on the wall. They know that each time they lose, they're gonna have to lose money. So when you win, you win your money back or you just keep your money. I don't know, those were just issues that I had. And I'm going to dissect the crap out of this film because when you watch it, they really want you to get a certain point out of it. 
and in the interviews that I've listen to what the people that made the film and the actors that were in the film want you to take out of it is something completely different than what I got out of it. And this comes from just watching films and comparing films that come out nowadays to films from back in the day. And while some stories I can't even argue, some stories from back in the day are kind of crazy, at least you understand more and it's more and you can just gravitate more to the character. At least they got some things right. I'm going back to the call to the fight. Actually, let me just finish that whole fight scene area. So, so Charlene invites her friend to this fight club. Anna does not know that she's going to a fight club because Charlene tells her, we're gonna meet at this coffee shop tonight, you bring a pillowcase, you're gonna put it over your head and I'm gonna drive you to the place. Okay. Now what's this all about? Put it on. What? Pull it over your head now. You're hiding her because you don't want her to find out where it's located. But when it's time for her to leave, she ends up walking out without a bag. So what was the whole point of putting a bag over her head? We're gonna ignore that. She gets to the place and this is when Anna realizes oh shoot this is a fight club all these women are fighting each other and oh my goodness they're actually getting beat up there's people with bloody faces okay I'm taking it as if, if as if I was Anna in this particular situation if I was going through a struggle and my friend invited me to a place that ended up being a fight club my friend knows me enough to know that I would never want to go to a fight club and Anna already discusses this with her like you know I don't like fighting I don't fight I've never been in a fight before Charlene I hate fights why are you why are you bringing me here so in my, in my mind, I'm like, how good of a friend are you if you know that your friend doesn't like fighting and the thing that you brought her to is exact is the exact opposite of what she likes doing anyway. In order for Anna to leave, she has to fight the newest member, the newest person in there, or fight this big butch girl that's guarding the door. It's totally up to you. It's so mm -hmm. dirty of her friend to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my, in my opinion, if I had a friend that set me up that way, she would no longer be my best friend. Now granted, as this film goes on, they want you to believe that the best friend did this with good intentions and it was good that she put her in this situation. But no, I, I, I find that the best friend set her up in a really bad way and they're trying to push this as empowerment and it's not. Like if someone says, hey, I'm not a fan of snakes. I do not like snakes. I'm terrified of snakes. I don't like being in places with snakes. But then you share with them a situation that happened and they're like, well, I know a great way to lift your spirits and they bring you to a place that's full of snakes. And the only way you can leave is if you hold a snake. Bitch, we're not friends anymore. Anyway, one of the things, am I getting darker? Is it's supposed to be a little cloudy and rainy today. All right, gotta make sure the, the levels are good. So another thing that this film definitely does that annoyed me too was instead of showing us why someone is a badass, they tell us that someone is a badass. This person is a thing. And we're not gonna prove to you why this person is a thing, but we are going to just tell you and you're just gonna believe it because we are gonna constantly say it to you. So Bella Thorne, I know I started off by saying the Disney, the Disney character, go on OnlyFans. I have to believe, and this is not based on any real facts. This is just me watching the film and just having this idea in my head. In Bella Thorne getting this role, I believe that she had a conversation with the director and said, listen, I'm only gonna be in this film if I'm portrayed as the badass bitch. Like I need to be able to go in and have people fear me. And that's the only way I'm going to be in it. I need to have my hair look a certain way. I need to have a certain sort of costume. Like I need to be able to have that badass aura about me. Cause I'm not, I am no longer a Disney character anymore. I'm no longer a part of Disney. I'm on OnlyFans, damn it. Olivia's gone up. Oh shit. Do yourself a favor, okay? Stay off Olivia's radar. Who's Olivia? Her. Are you kidding me? Give me the respect I deserve. I am a grown ass adult. Make me a badass in this film. And everybody just was like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> Make her the badass. We never had the chance to meet. I'm uh, dead to me. Excuse me? You're dead to me. You and all the other head cases that come into that place. And now everybody in the film is terrified of her. Goodness, you're gonna fight who? Olivia? I had to look, make sure I remember her name. I don't remember any of these people's names, honestly. I just know them by their, their after names. You are a dead person, okay? You challenged Olivia? What monumental brain fart caused this level of stupidity? Constantly, constantly. And there's no way you're gonna have me believe that she is so dangerous that no one has ever beaten her. 
but they're going to tell you in the film that she is. Also, before all of this takes place, Anna ends up going to her dad. Now, it's funny because the actor that plays her dad, I remember first seeing him, I believe I saw him in The Punisher with Thomas Jane. He was like playing this Russian. He's like really tall, really muscular. I, I've probably seen him in other things, obviously. His name is very familiar, so I've definitely seen him in other things, but I believe he was in The Punisher. He was just like this unstoppable freaking machine. Seeing him in this film, it was kind of odd. You get what this film is trying to give you as messaging. He's this big guy, and she's there showing, you know, telling her life up to this point and how it's just falling apart. Come to find out, she finds out that her dad is gay, and he claimed that he had a date over, and... Anna assumed that it was a woman. One would assume that. But come to find out, it's like this small Asian guy or Hispanic. I don't really know who he is. I just remember the small guy. He was in a lot of like black sitcoms. He's dating this guy. And when he was married to his wife that had passed because of some sort of disease or whatever, he wasn't living his true self. And he truly is a gay man. Listen, messaging plays a big role in this film and it, it sucks when people don't fully comprehend that. But yeah, he's this big, massive guy and you see him wearing a mesh shirt, really tight shorts. To me, it felt like the actor was literally just trying to get a check because he did not look comfortable in any of the things that he was doing in this film, but that's neither here nor there. This is not based off of any facts. This is just what I'm visually seeing from the film. After getting demolished, Anna, because she had to fight somebody, so she ends up fighting this woman who's new, and she had like this little timid sort of look, so Anna was feeling kind of bad, but then all of a sudden turn around, the woman is like a fucking... Like a ninja. <laughs> she beats Anna up. Oh, no. Anna was out like a light, but she also doesn't fight either. So keeping that in mind, we're introduced to the doctor, Dr. Roy, who I remember from uh, a sitcom from a long time ago, I think called Unhappily Ever After, the brother of the butch chick that was in the film, I'm trying to figure out her name. None of these people, Bear, her name is Bear. Dr. Roy is her brother. And that's how he gets in contact with Anna. But Anna now, she wants to learn how to be a, like be a actual true fighter because she encounters Olivia and a couple of her friends outside of the club and she challenges them to a fight. And the thing about it is that when you challenge someone, you cannot back out of it. I challenge you. And I accept. Pick a time. Because if you back out of a fight that you challenge someone to do, you, cannot, you can no longer come back to the club. Which, to me, sounds great. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go back. You better watch your back. Well, you better watch your front parts. Punch your boobs. This was fun. I mean, it's in the genre that I love most, which is comedy. We ended up finding comedy in places that we didn't always know that it was. And that's, you know, a testament to fortune and a testament to the writing and a testament to the casting. There's a bunch of women and they're fighting each other. At least when I was watching Fight Club with Brad Pitt and Edward Norton, like seeing the bloodiness and the violence, it made sense. It wasn't necessarily like a like a therapy session. You know, they literally were just fighting and just going on with life. And it felt good to see because no one was trying to make it more than what it was. You know, in this film, they're trying to have like there's this whole scene that takes place. Oh, man, I can literally go on for like a good hour about this film. And who knows? I just might. There's a moment that takes place where it's revealed to Anna that her mom is the one that actually started up this club and was using it as like a like a therapy session for all these women that were having like a whole bunch of different struggles in their life and didn't know where to turn to and was letting them know like this is a safe place for you guys and you guys can fight and like just get rid of all that anger that's built up, blue to blah to blah, blah, motivational blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, listen. I, I get it. Life is just hitting you guys hard. And sometimes the best way to do it is fight it. But in Anna's case, this was not the case at all. In Anna's case, it was just a lack of responsibility and a lack of marketing. Because as the film goes on, you start to realize the film is just happening, all right? It's just happening, and you kind of could expect exactly what's going to happen at the end. She's going to get the she's going to get the man. She's going to have the business, and somehow, some way, the business is just going to be successful, despite the fact that nothing has changed from the beginning of the film as far as her personality. She just knows how to fight better. It doesn't really make any sense, and if we're going to really nitpick the film 
they even have a little bit of references to Fight Club, like the more superior film, which is a lot layered than just someone having a terrible life and then finding a Fight Club, getting all their anger out and aggression by fighting other people. That film is so deep. This film is so surface level that it thinks that it's deeper than it actually is. In challenging Olivia, thing that she should have not done because Olivia is so badass. She is terrified, weak in the knees, and she tells Charlotte and Charlene's like, I know a person that can train you. And in walks Alex Baldwin. We're not going to deep dive too much into him, but I will say that out of all the people in the film, he was my favorite character, and that's not saying much because I, he was kind of annoying. But in comparison to everybody else, he was totally fine. She's getting the impression, because that's what the film has given us, the impression that he trained Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray, the boxer. Makes a lot of sense, right? As the film goes on, we realize he trained Sugar Ray, the band, and that was supposed to be the comic part of it, the comedic part. Oh, that was a misunderstanding. We thought you meant the boxer. You mean you've been training bands? Oh my God, the comedy. This is the thing too also, going back to the genre, it's considering itself a comedy and action film. In your opinion, let me know in the comments below, if you go into a film that's considered a comedy and you don't laugh, is the film still considered a comedy? So there were a lot of times when I was watching this film where you know that they were trying to get someone to laugh. Okay, let's put it like this. When I'm watching a film or just anything, a sitcom or whatever, and it's been a while since I've watched sitcoms, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, sitcoms nowadays are just not funny. I find a lot of the sitcoms that were hilarious to have come out in the early 90s, even late 80s, because they just knew how to do comedy and no one was politically correct when they were talking about stuff. So when you start deep diving into making sure you don't offend people, tiptoeing around things and pushing out messages that are contradictory to what the characters are like. It's hard to get comedy out of it. Not often have I found a comedy thus far up to this point that has come out within the past five to 10 years that actually has been funny. This film tries really hard to push it. Again, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> when you're forcing a joke onto people with the, with the potential of having someone laugh, it's like having a sitcom that says a joke, you hear the laugh track and then they go on. Now imagine that laugh track was not there, would the joke still be funny? Well, you better watch your front parts, punch your boobs. I mean, it's in the genre that I love most, which is comedy. I go back to Frasier, which is literally one of my favorite sitcoms from back in the day, because when it was actually airing, I never watched it. I always, I started watching it when it started playing reruns. When I was watching it back in the day, when I was younger, funny. Watching it now and seeing it from adult eyes, it's very interesting how that show could be considered an offensive show now because people are so politically correct, while Frasier and shows from back in those days were not politically correct. And I loved it, it's refreshing. You don't see shows like that anymore. Even on platforms like HPO and Showtime and Stars, they still try to be politically correct with things. And it sucks because those are the platforms where you should be open to do anything. And IFC, a, a channel that I really had high hopes of creating a film for to put on there. There were times where I was watching films back in the day and they were very free with saying just anything and it felt good. Like, I don't care, say something about black people, say something about gay people, say something about politics, say things about stuff, but have it be good. Like, you can't just throw out random jokes uh, that may be considered offensive, but not funny. I could laugh at a, at a funny offensive joke because one, for me personally, I don't get easily offended. I grew up in a time where that was a thing that was not a thing like it wasn't it's not until the past like 10 years maybe even 15 years that things started to get real feeling oriented comedy is no longer comedy because if you say something that is a uh, negative against a person or a race or a or a, a, a sexual orientation or a thing you're canceled so now you have to tiptoe around things and you have to be on board with the thing that if you said something negative about it, you would get canceled. So you have to be open to it. It doesn't work, I'm just saying. So when it comes to this film, they definitely try to push a thing on as the narrative and passing it off as comedy. And it didn't work for me. And they do it quite a few times actually, it's actually kind of annoying. Um, so we're wrapping it up now because uh, again, it is on Netflix, on uh, Amazon Prime, so it is a thing to watch. It's 97 minutes long too, so you're not there for a long time, thank God. Now, Anna is like one of those characters that <laughs> you don't really feel sorry for. Like, you would feel sorry for her if you heard her story, if she was telling it to you. If you knew everything that was happening behind the scenes that led to the things that are happening to her now, you would be like, oh, I don't 
trust anything you say, bitch, because you were kind of at fault for everything. You could have been doing way more for your business that it would be more popular, but you didn't. But now because the film needs to wrap up, everything is just working out in her favor while nothing has changed. As she's training, because she's preparing for this fight that she challenged Olivia to do, she doesn't want, you know, she gets hit once and it's like, oh, I don't want it because it hurts. Oh, this training sucks. I don't want it. No, don't fight back. Yes, it does, because it's painful to train. Oh, this is bullshit. How much longer am I going to have to take this? Until you can't take it anymore. But I can't take it anymore. Then all of a sudden, she's out looking for a job, and she gets confronted by Olivia and, like, uh, her her little gang of friends. They say something to her that makes her mad, and now she's ready to take the punches. Hey, Frenchie, heads up. Let's and you want to get punched? Can I finish my drink? No. It's like, bitch, this was always an issue. Like, what are you talking about? Like, why why is it now okay for you to get punched in the face when literally, like, a day ago, this was an issue? Like, the punches are still hurting. You're just mad right now because someone said something to you you didn't like. Anybody, at any given time, if you feel good, you, don't, you wouldn't want to train. But then again, you still challenged someone and you knew the rules. Despite how you got into the club and despite the fact that I generally thought that Charlene was a terrible friend for doing that. You knew the rules because you continued to go back and you challenged someone. You knew that there was a training that needs to take place because Olivia is a badass. So you got to train a little bit. I don't know. I was getting so annoyed watching it. The film actually felt longer than the 97 minutes. Like it felt like I was watching a film that was almost two hours long because it was just so it was a lot of stuff in it that I felt like would have been done better if it was written better. Like they're, they're trying to convince me of things and I'm just like, listen, I'm not in it. Long story short, we wrapped the film up. Um, there's a lot of quarrels going on. Alec Baldwin, his name is Jack. Well, I think they call him Murphy. Murphy and Anna are like, their heads are budding. Anna's not getting it. She's, you know, saying things that she doesn't really mean, you know, as far as being reliable and coming to training, but she gets mad and she just gives up on everything, which proves a lot of my point as to you can hear what she says about her life and you could feel bad, but knowing what she's actually doing behind the scenes might make you look at the situation a little differently. Um, she gives up at the, at the first sign of any sort of issue. And it's like, but bitch, you know you, you, you signed up for a thing. You know that this is a thing that needs to be, there needs to be follow through with this. But instead, at any given time when you don't feel like it, Things are good, you can just not do it, even though you have responsibilities and you have people that are relying on you. Whatever. <laughs> Listen, female empowerment, right? Cool. As the film goes on, we're gonna wrap this up really quick. So the fight happens somehow, some way. She wins the fight against Olivia, proving that she's now a badass. <laughs> and also it's revealed to her that her mom, before she died, she put the, the, sh the shop the club in Anna's name and now Anna's the owner of it. There was a little bit of a issue that took place between Charlene and another person there because at the beginning Charlene arrested a kid that I guess was selling drugs around the school. The kid that was selling the drugs, his mom was going to the club and they had a whole fallout. You <laughs> fucked with the wrong family, Charlene. Ah, uh, I warned you and your goofy ass son. Anything harder than that, especially in the school, we're gonna have a problem. And the mom was feeling a certain way because she challenged Charlene to a fight and the mom lost. And so she kind of like bamboozled them and called the cops on them. They, she called the cops on them, right? And the scene takes place where this is all being revealed. Anna won the fight between Olivia. Olivia somehow, some way is, you know, praising her for being a great fighter when, okay, whatever. I know we're close to the end of the film so we have to wrap things up. The, the cops are coming. Anna decides to take the fall, even though they all could have just left at the same time, but whatever. We need someone to be the hero, and Anna, because she overcomes so many obstacles up to this point, she has to be the hero in this. You see the cops that come in, right? And it's like, you're, you're storming a place that has a fight club. Like, we don't know necessarily what the woman said to the cops, but from the amount of cops that came, you gotta believe that she she didn't say too much, okay? I wanna say there was probably like six, seven cops. Normally when you're watching a raid taking place and there's like underground gambling or like drug or prostitution, there's like swarms of cops. Maybe it was a budget thing too. Maybe they didn't have enough money to get a bunch of cops to come in. But it just felt so like they were like trying to break up a, a party that was being that was taking place with underage kids you know like it didn't really it didn't really make sense like you know you're dealing with adults this is an underground fight club you don't know what to expect you only bring like five or six cops in great sweet whatever 
film was almost done. Somehow, someway, Anna was able to get not also a bigger coffee shop, but she was able to turn it into like a full-fledged restaurant and get business. How is that even possible? We don't know. She owns a fight club down and that's all we need to know about the situation also at the end like i mentioned at the beginning charlene gets the barista we don't know how she gets it but we've also seen charlene throughout the film and how she is so one would ask is that what the girl is attracted to because one we never got the impression that the girl that it's the barista we never got the impression that she was a lesbian and to be perfectly honest charlene never said that she only dated lesbians she said that she can get anybody that she wants because of confidence i don't believe it though so also at the very end of the film we have this woman who actually you see this girl in the film this black chick um her name is naomi but they really don't talk about her that much but you see her and like vaguely you see her throughout the film which means you obviously are going to see her at the end of the film there's going to be a big reveal and she was this person that also fought her mom and she's like this big tough fighter that only lost to Anna's mom and you see her she doesn't really talk much in the film but she does this staring thing that's like really odd and I'm like uh okay you know the end of the film happens and uh Anna has the trial that's taking place because of the underground thing and we don't really know what happens in the court because we see the black woman come out as the judge and so you kind of know like exactly how the film is going to go <laughs> Like you already know what the verdict is going to be because they already have that connection because of the fight club. Uh, yeah, so everything just works out for everybody. Also, there was a... <laughs> We're wrapping it up, guys. We're wrapping it up. There's this scene that takes place where Anna is looking for a job and she walks into a coffee shop that slash an art studio slash a boxing spot, like a boxing training area that happens to be owned by Olivia. You own the gallery? Mm-hmm. Actually, I own the whole building. Yeah, of course oh, you do. Wow. We never know how she came across to owning this. We just are told that she owns it and she owns the building and no explanation needed. <laughs> so great. When she walks into, when Anna walks to this coffee shop that is all white, a decent looking spot, there's no one in it. But for some reason, it's successful. Instead of asking the, the best questions, like, oh, how do you, how did you come across to having a coffee shop that looks like it's dead right now, but you clearly are successful because you own the building, da, da, da. Things that one would ask when you come across someone who actually runs a business well. Like, yeah, you guys are supposed to be enemies, but at the same time, she has a coffee shop and you're getting, you're trying to get a job at her coffee shop and her coffee shop from what they've been trying to tell us is successful. You're not asking questions as far as what is making her business successful so you could probably take some advice no okay like as a business owner you go into other people's businesses and they're flourishing one would want to ask what are you doing differently i can i can i pay you to teach me some things that i don't know i had a failing business and i feel like i missed some key points in growing a business successfully i would love to know what you know but that's not what anna does okay long story short in watching this film is it empowering though Depends on who you talk to. Genre with like fight, the fight club um, energy with female powerhouses. If you've made it up to this point and you enjoyed what I think about this film, Chick Fight, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a like. Forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. Dissecting films that I watch on streaming services is a thing that I've always wanted to do. As a filmmaker making films, I know hands down what it's like to make a film and have your point of view as far as why you made the film compared to what other people are getting out of it. Sometimes they clash. What you made a film for and what inspired you to make it is completely different than how other people are gonna view it. And with that being said, art is very subjective. I know what kind of avenue they were gonna go down with this. And when you put your film out there as an action comedy, if you fail on the comedy aspect, you gotta believe that all the other messaging is probably gonna fail too. And when you're trying really hard to have people laugh in a film, you're scrambling for, for just anything because you shouldn't have to try hard. Like when I was watching Fight Club, there were things that were funny. It was just taking place. It just happened to be funny. Scenes were being done and acted well with actors that were actually good actors that knew how to portray being charismatic, funny, and still have that dark element that you, you're getting all of those feels when you're watching it. It was just done better. Also, flipping it, knowing that Malin Ackerman was in this film, it's very funny going back now. I, I, her face was very familiar. And I'm like, oh, 
one of the reasons why I decided to watch this is because I remember her from watching Watchmen, and I enjoyed Watchmen. But then when I went back and watched it again, I realized her character was kind of annoying. That might be just a personal trait of hers, like her being like personally an annoying person. In watching this film, I saw a few of those traits as well, of just being a person that could be really annoying. I just made that a uh, comparison because when I was watching, like I said, I went back, watched Watchmen, and I heard other people's points of view on YouTube when it came to Watchmen, and everybody kind of had similar points. Like, everybody liked all the characters, but when it came to Malin Ackerman's character, you know, she just, she was kind of annoying, similar to this film. But that's my opinion, just saying. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. Let me know in the comments below, have you seen this film? And are you familiar with the face of that chick that's the main character? I remember first seeing her in Watchmen, then I saw her in this. And I was like, boy, this is rough. I mean, everybody has bills to pay because bills be billing. Is she like an Ella Belinska or is she just really just getting anything that she can get because she has bills to pay, which is understandable too. It's kind of rough out there in those Hollywood streets. But let me know what you guys think about this commentary and the film and the actress in general because I'd be very intrigued to read what you guys think. If you guys don't know, I have a podcast where I talk about life traveling around Florida and meeting interesting people along the way. All the information for that could be in the description bar below as well. And if you happen to be on any other platform listening to podcasts, podcast there's a huge possibility that you will be able to find mine so definitely give it a gander give it a listen follow it if you enjoy it and rate it if you love it five stars will be amazing i love you all and i hope to see you all in the next video